starting new in a server? Here is a quick walkthrough guide on how to get good starter gear quickly. Everything shown works on Quest and PCVR, unless the Quest version doesn't have the content yet. Check the pinned comment for current Quest compatibility. I will be skimming through a few things for time, so if you want a more in-depth guide to certain parts, please check out my everything guide on either the town or the wild. Also, this guide will be private server friendly, so I will show what you can do for people who don't have everything built already. Though, my methods will be a lot easier if you have things like the desmelter built. I'll go over this part quickly. These guys are called spriggles. Kill them using your flint hatchet. Collect the legs, and once you have a few, you can make a fire using dry grass and wood. Sticks burn out quickly. Logs and coal are the best fuel source for these. Alternatively, you can go to the blacksmith up these stairs and throw your meat into this torch. The white smoke means it is cooking, and the black smoke means it is burning. Take the meat out when it is cooked. Don't let it burn. You can either eat the meat like this, or you can use a blade to cut the meat into chunks, which give you more total nutrition. If another player is nearby, ask them to cut the meat if you can't yourself. Throw the bones in a storage container. Please don't leave them on the ground as it can lag the server. The first thing I recommend you do is to go and craft yourself a leather bag. A leather bag has three more item slots than the grass bag and can hold two attachment points. The use of pouches can bring this bag slot all the way up to 13. I will now give a basic overview and then we'll go into more detail in what I mean. First, go to the dust bowl to get materials. Then go to the mountain pass to get more materials. Smelt down copper heads to create buckles, and a copper hammer. Chisel the handle of your hammer. Then go to the crafting house and make your bag. Simple, right? Now, let's get into more detail. These are the materials you will need. There are many places you can find leather. You can find it in the dust bowl chests, crates in the mines, boxes in the mountain pass, and from dice or hanging sacks in the forest and small forest. If you know what you're doing, you can run into the small forest and hit down the hanging sacks to get leather pretty quickly. But that is not something I recommend you do for newer players. For new players, the easiest places to get leather is the Dust Bowl and the Mountain Pass. To get to the Dust Bowl, walk up this hill and take a right from the sign pointing to the Dust Bowl. Be careful of worms, they can shoot acid. Try dodging their attacks, don't bother fighting them right now. Check all the chests here. Remember, you are mainly looking for leather rolls, lanterns, cauldrons, and buckets. Chest 1 is by the entrance. If there is stone here, you can break it open with Turabata shards, fireworks, or dynamite. Chest 2 is over the stone bridge to the right. If these stairs are not built, you can get up to the next ledge by standing on this rock and teleporting up. Teleport your way up this scaffolding and around the bend. Chest 5 is up here, next to the recall potion crate. If you ever need to fill up on recall potion, you can do it here. You can walk back the way you came or you can fall down here and teleport to the ledge. Continue down the hill to leave if you want to. To get the other two chests, fall down on this ledge. Walk over to chest 6. Fall down the cliff and land on this lip. Then grab whatever is in chest 7. Now you have looted the entirety of the Dust Bowl. If you did not get enough leather from the Dust Bowl, don't worry, it's not common to, you can get yourself over to the mountain pass, walk through town, right, up the hill, and right again to reach the town hall. Once you are at the town hall, follow the sign that says mountain pass. This bridge needs to be built if you want to access the mountain pass. Hey, don't tell anybody, but you can actually get over the side and skip the bridge in case you didn't build it yet. Across the bridge, stay on the left. Once you reach this map, take a right through here. 
This is a maze, so just follow my movements and you should get through a-okay. Hop over these logs, and check the chest in the cave. From the cave, turn left, and left again. Here is loot spot number one. Break the crates and vases with your flint hatchet. Worms can spawn here too, so ignore them if you don't have a weapon. The flint hatchet is a terrible weapon, but you can kill them eventually. I don't recommend it though. Once you get everything here, turn to the left and make sure you go over these wind steps and over this log and over this pond. Then you will find the rock path. From the rock path, take two hard lefts and walk up this hill a little bit. Here is loot spot number two with chest number two. Turn around and walk straight. Once you see these trees, there will be a dirt ramp to your immediate right. Go up it. Chest three is here. There are some rusty tools here as well. They are really bad, but they do work for what they're supposed to do. Continue along the rock bridges. Map over here, by the way. Here is the third loot spot. Chest number four is over this bridge to the left. See this tree? Slide down the cliff. Go slow here to reduce fall damage. Once down here, you will find a loot spot one again. Loot spot crates and vases respawn when you walk far away enough, and chests restock their contents every two hours or so. Following the path shown will give enough space for some of the crates and vases to respawn. Take this path over and over until you have enough materials. Drink one of the recall potions you find to get back to town. Or you can simply walk back. If you did not get enough leather from the Dust Bowl and don't have access to the Mountain Pass, then you have four options. 1. Go to the Wooded Valley and Hebios camps and hope you find some leather there. 2. Go to the mines and find leather inside the crates. 3. Wait two hours for the chests in the Dust Bowl to restock. 4. Go to the small forest and hunt dice or break the hanging sacks. These options are harder or more tedious, so if you have the choice to, try to stick to the main method shown. Before we get to actually crafting the bag, we need to talk about the materials specifically. For a leather bag, you need at least 7 leather straps, 2 leather rolls, and 11 buckles. You can find leather rolls in the dust bowl and mountain pass. You may find different colors of leather, but they all work the same at the end of the day. You can cut leather rolls with a weapon to make 3 leather straps. To get enough straps for your bag, you can break 3 rolls. You can find buckles in the mountain pass, but it may just be easier to forge them from ingots, or to decraft something. If you find a lantern, you can take it apart and use the buckles for your bag. You can also decraft buckets and cauldrons. Use a flint and rock hammer to chisel the pieces off. You must chisel it in order. For the lantern, get the handle, then the front hole, and cage bars, then the base. For the cauldron, get the handles first, then the buckles, then the base. Chisel the bottom of the bucket off first. Then you can get the rest in the same order as the cauldron. Save the buckles and smelt the iron plates in the desmelter. You need to throw them in one by one or else they won't melt. Finding any of these bad boys will net you more than enough buckles for a leather bag. If you don't want to use iron, you can always get copper tool heads and attachment points and smelt them down in the desmelter. These are the big guys you are looking for and how much ingots they net you when smelted down. Once you get the ingots, you can throw them in the smelter with the buckle mold. Use 8 ingots to make 12 buckles. If the desmelter is not built on your server, you can go to the quarry and mine copper. From the mines, walk up this hill. Walk into the rock area. These rock people are called turabatas. Ignore them and mine the copper. It takes three ore to create one ingot. 
If you need iron to build the D smelter, you can also break buckets for straight iron ingots. Getting the 50 iron required will take a little while using this method. One last thing before crafting the leather bag. Crafting depends on what hammer you use. The best scenario for you is the copper hammer. However, the gold hammer is a better option if anyone has that already. Copper still does very little damage, so copper will work great for this. For crafting, you will want the low damage. If you can't be bothered to create a copper hammer, or don't have the mold for it, then you can just use a rock hammer. The rock hammer will work, but you are more likely to break the material when using it, so please try and be careful. To make a copper hammer, put the crafting hammer mold in the furnace slot, and throw three copper ingots in. Make sure there's fuel in the furnace. Out the other end will pop out your hammer head. Next, go to the carpentry building and make the hammer handle. This is the one you want to make, but these ones will also work. Put the paper into the holder and throw six wood wedges into the clamp. Chisel the highlighted wood pieces off. Try to hit the wood at a 30 or 60 degree angle. Pull the lever to your left to rotate the wood. Once all the bark is off, you can chisel all the remaining pieces in any order you want. Hit the middle a few times, and you are done. Let go of the hammer when the circle turns cyan to fit the two pieces together. If you do not have a hammer handle page in your book, or if you want to chisel something that you don't have the page for, check the wiki for instructions. You can chisel the handle through memory, as the order of chiseled bark is consistent with the recipe. Just remember to get the order right. If you don't, it will chisel something random. While harder and more tedious, it does work in case you need it. Now, you can finally start crafting. Grab the material and place it over the blue highlights, and let go when it turns green. Pound the nails in if any appear. Try to move only your wrist instead of using your whole arm. Continue to place materials and hammering nails. Any blue highlights is where you will need to place the next material. Hitting the nail too hard, hitting a bent nail, or just dealing too much damage will break the material, which means it will be gone forever. If you hear a branch snap, or if you notice red lines across the material, that means it is about to break. If you have not nailed any nails in yet, you can grab it off and place it back on again to reset its durability. If you have already hammered in a nail, you can either wait for the timer to run out, or you can chisel the material off. Once you finish your leather bag, you are done! Just kidding. You can add extra attachments. The leather bag has two attachment slots on either side. The leather pouch gives you two extra slots for your bag. Double them up for 13 slots total. You can craft other attachments, like the tool hook, which allows you to quickly grab weapons, including heavy ones and lit lanterns, from your side. This concludes all the good attachments. <laughs> uh, use any of the specialist pouches if you plan on getting those specific items a lot. For now, stick with either the leather pouch or the tool hook. These are the only ones you will really need. To attach them to your bag, Place the bag on the bag hook, place your attachment, and hammer in both nails. Okay, now you are done with your bag. Now that you have your bag, it's time to make some good tools and weapons. Red iron is a great alloy for starting players. It is pretty easy to get, and has fairly good stats. It's better than both copper and iron in damage and durability. I recommend red iron to all new players. To get it, you will need both iron and copper. Take the mold out of the smelter, preferably. Then, throw a 1 to 1 ratio of copper and iron into the smelter. On the other side, your red iron will pop out. One iron ingot and one copper ingot will create one red iron ingot. Now you can use the molds to make whatever you want.
If you want to get copper and iron, I have explained how to already in the backpack section, but I will make an overview to remind you again. You can get copper from the quarry or mines, preferably the quarry. You can find copper parts in chests and smelt them down to make ingots. You can get iron from cauldrons and buckets, decraft them, and melt the plates and buckles to get iron bars. If you find them, you can melt down these iron handles to get some more ingots. You can also find iron in the mines around layer 15 or 20 and below, but that's harder and does take much more time. One more thing. Check if this gem is in the smelter. If it is not, you or someone else in the server will need to complete the first combat trial to get the gem and put it in the smelter to unlock the ability to create the red iron alloy. As of writing, Quest does not have the combat trials, so until they are added, you don't really need to bother. To get to the first combat trial, you will need to get to layer 21 in the mines. Make sure you bring two torches with you, along with 50 coal. Use an explosive to blow up the rocks. Then, put the torches in the holders to unlock the door. Place the coal in the center machine and pull the lever to start the trial. Doing this with a few friends is recommended. A shield can also help in avoiding the acid spit. Three waves of worm will start spawning. First wave is a bunch of normal worms. Second is a mix of normal worms and crystal worms. And last is exclusively crystal worms. Once all the worms are dead, the next wave will spawn. If you wait before killing the last one, you can take a breather. I recommend taking out the ones on the side first. Use the sides to recuperate and regenerate your health if you need to. After finishing the last crystal worm in the third wave, the cage door will open. Check the chests for any loot. If you are the first one, then your pickings are quite good. Grab the upgrade crystal. Put your hand on the health altar to get two more HP. Stand on this thing to end the combat trial. Here's a few bonus facts. In the main menu, you can change your settings in the game. One setting that I recommend is turning on the invert walk run toggle, which means you will be running by default instead of walking by default. Also, one last thing. If you play on PC VR and you would like to increase performance, you can turn on low graphics settings by going into the launcher and then hold down shift on your keyboard, then press play. Keep holding it down until this window appears. Change the graphics from fantastic to low. You can also change the resolution and turn on windowed mode if you want. This video is recorded in low graphics settings because my computer kinda sucks. From this video, you should have learned enough to make a backpack and get enough metal for tools that you want to make. I hope I've helped. Thank you for your time.